So I figured I'd give an update to all you guys that haven't seen the progress on the rally car. I've been preparing it for paint for the last several days. I sandblasted it, put a coat of DuPont Very Prime on all the bare metal. Right now I'm sanding and uh, cleaning everything that can be reached. So hopefully here in the next day or so I'll be putting uh, epoxy primer sealer on the whole car and it should be ready for paint. So we'll uh, hopefully <laughs> it'll be ready to go. I'll give you guys a quick run over the whole chassis and give you an update. You can see all the chassis has been reinforced with heavy plating and all the suspension pickup points. Uh, the motor mounts have all been custom fabricated. You can see that one on that side. On the front end I'm gonna use a very large uh, radiator so I had to cut most of the radiator support out on the top. There's a shot of the frame rail right there that's been reinforced with heavy plate steel. I cut all the rockers out so that when I sandblast it all the sand can fall out and it doesn't get trapped in the rocker panel. This is the roll cage. It's all very primed, ready to be painted. Another shot of the roll cage. You can see it's tucked in there pretty tight. That's all been done by Charlie North of Function First Motorsports. Probably the best cage builder I've ever run into. So as you can see the car is on a chassis rotisserie so it can be easily moved. Anytime I'm doing any work on it, I can just rotate the car and do all the work that I need to do. It makes it a lot easier. And by the way, Charlie, I'll have your rotisserie back hopefully really soon. So in the wheel wells on the rear, I'm also doing it on the front, but the rear was pretty much the hardest one. I actually cut out about three inches of the wheel well down to here and then put an interconnect piece from the inside to the outer wheel well. What that'll do is it'll give me the ability to run a much wider wheel. Uh, my plan was to run, you know, like a six and a half or seven inch wheel offset to the outside, so like a six and a half inch with a 39 millimeter offset, but what I ended up getting was the ability to actually run up to a 10 inch wide wheel on this car. And to kind of neaten it up, I got these spiffy little fender flares that are going to bolt right on here and clean it up. My plan is to have plastic nut inserted to the inside that will come out right to the edge of this fender flare so it will keep rocks from blowing my fiberglass fender flares off. Of course back here you can see my nice spiffy mud flap mounts. These are actually stainless steel so if they get rock blasted they're not going to rust up. And what the plan is to actually have a mud flap that wraps around the inside and comes outside quite a bit. And uh, these will support that quite nicely. I've also cut off the rear of the car. The car used to actually come down to about right here. I've cut that all off and boxed it in because it was absolutely unnecessary and didn't need to be there. You can see this is one of the locations where the cage actually comes down through the bottom of the car and picks up that suspension cross member in the underneath. A lot of this car has been cut out underneath here, as you can see. There's usually a big structural piece right here that sticks down and picks up all the suspension pieces, but that's all been cut out and replaced by a piece of uh, two inch box tube and of course a roll cage tube. One of the things I did is, I actually mocked this up just now, um, I made a little bracket in the car right next to the shifter plate and uh, now I've actually installed an e-brake that you can pull, hydraulic e-brake that goes in line right next to the shifter. So anytime I need an emergency handbrake, that's going to be sitting right there next to the, next to the shifter. Of course here you can see a tube that goes right from the strut tower and it disappears through the uh, inner fender. It comes out down here and then goes down to a two inch piece of box tubing that's going to support the front skid plate. In the passenger side wheel well you can see over there I've actually installed the remote oil filter set up on it and uh, right now it's just mocked up. But you can see that the oil filter will now be 
down underneath the passenger side where you can just take it right off right there. A lot easier.